So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, and uh, Vani is going to lead us off. So Vani, you can take it away. Well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Vani, and I'm a business marketing specialist with Iowa Works in Des Moines. My colleague Nancy and Jeff and I will be spending this next hour uh, providing you with overview of our services, resources, and strategies that will help you with your worker shortages. Iowa Works has been around for, ooh, let's see, about since 1996. So I wanted to share. since 1996, and I know that we have had a few changes along the way. However, we have always had presence in the communities that we serve. So I can say with confidence that we have provided services to generations of Iowans during that time. So as employers, we hope that you know that Iowa Works Offices provides more than just unemployment related services. Our offices serves two roles. One role assists the job seeker and the other role provides customized services to you, the employer. Today, we'll be providing an overview of our services, resources, and recruitment processes that can help you figure out ways to deal with worker shortages in your industry. Because hiring good employees can be challenging without or with the threat of COVID. We want you to know that our services can assist you with various employment resources. And here are just a few that I will share with you. We can help advise and assist with target recruitment and hiring events. With your input, we can help you customize recruitment services, such as career fairs, job customized strategies, um, job boards, high school career events, social media, using Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and outreach to targeted populations in your community that maybe you haven't thought about. We share information about our statewide resources, such as providing current labor market information as it relates to prevailing wage and projected job openings in your region, free hiring incentives, such as the work opportunity tax credit and actually known as WOTC. This is a federal tax credit for employers to hire individuals with significant barriers to employment. And individuals that are receiving this are, have assistance with various programs, such as veterans, FIP, and SNAP recipients, designated rural renewal counties, and qualified long-term unemployment recipients, as well as vocational rehabilitation referrals, and social security recipients. These are, these are areas that you may not have considered, but yet these are part of the WOTC resources. Next, we have federal bonding. Although selective, this is a free fidelity bond that has a value up to $5,000, and it's good for six months. This bond is issued to protect loss uh, against loss of money or property due to employee dishonesty. It's an incentive to hire a possible at risk job seeker. Next, we have WIOA, which stands for Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. These are services to assist dislocated workers with integrated core services, training services, on the job training, and support services to allow them to do the jobs that they have been um, selected for. Next, we have Promise Jobs. This is promoting independence and self sufficiency through employment. That is the acronym for Promise Jobs. This program offers job opportunities basic skills, work experience, and on-the-job training options. Participants of this program are recipients of financial assistance payments through the Family Investment Program, which is administered through the Department of Human Services. Next, we have the Home Base Iowa. 
This is a free platform for veteran and spouses to welcome service members in their family to return or in some cases relocate to Iowa. Employers can register their businesses here for, for veterans to see and employers will have an opportunity to review posted resumes of service members and their spouses for job opportunities. There are over 44 home-based Iowa communities that offer incentives for relocation of their counties or city, cities for veterans. Next, we have apprenticeships. This is an opportunity for a job seeker's talent to be cultivated through an earn and learn training and education module. And all of this is done without generating debt from an academic program or institution. Now, I know that I covered a lot of information with you just now, but don't let it overwhelm you because this presentation is being recorded for future review. All the information that I have provided thus far all require an employment services starting point. I wanna repeat that, that requires an employment services starting point. And this is where an employer registration and job posting are on one of Iowa's largest database is done. Now I will turn this over to members of our employment services team who will actually show you how to create a registration, post a job order, and effectively match job seekers from start to finish. Remember, if you experience any problems, no worries. Feel free to connect to your local workforce office and speak to a member of the business services team to provide technical assistance. We would like to thank you for your work that you do in your communities. And because of your attendance today shows your commitment of service. Now I will turn it over to Nancy. Hi, I'm Nancy Lundgren, and I'm a business services representative here in the Fort Dodge office. Um, I wanted to start out my um, conversation today with a question um, that's going to help you to understand um, how our system helps you. Um, so did you know, according to the SHRM's 2017 Talent Acquisition Benchmarking Service, Survey, the average cost of recruiting an employee was actually $4,425. Um, that's just for one person. Um, this includes third party agency fees, advertising and background checks. So it's a big undertaking to bring on a new employee. Um, so let's talk about that cost a little bit. A lot of those costs you can't really control, but one of, it, one of them that you can is the advertising cost. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, advertising in a newspaper, the average cost for a black and white ad is $12 an inch. Um, on average, employers pay about six to $800 just for one position to advertise in the newspaper. Um, and right now, people are kind of moving more towards the online um, option. And so let's talk a little bit about some of those places that you can advertise. Um, so Google, um, they charge one to $2 per click. So that's not just like the ad that you put out there. That's every time somebody sees your ad and actually clicks on it, you're going to pay for them to view your ad. Um, so it's one to $2 per click. Um, Indeed's kind of the same way. They do 10 cents to over $5 a click. Um, and again, you're paying for each job seeker to see it. Uh, Monster starter subscription is $249 per month for one job. A premium subscription for five jobs is $999 per month. Um, and they also cap your um, job applicants that you can access through their database to, um, to 50 to 150, just depending on your plan that you have. Um, Career Builder, you're gonna pay as you go with their option is $375 per month. Um, Craigslist, you'll pay about $10 to $75 for a 30 day posting. Um, so some things that you always wanna consider before you post is of course the traffic that you receive, candidate quality and demographic, the pricing model and the timing period. Um, so these are things that we can help you with because Iowa Works is the, um, is the largest database largest candidate database in Iowa. Um, and plus bonus, Iowa Works is for free. <laughs> so um, so we definitely want you to um, try it. It's a great, 
when I was a recruiter, one thing I always did was it was the first place that I posted before I reached out to the places that cost me money. Um, and that's one way I kept costs down. Um, so what do you need to register at Iowa Works? Uh, first of all, you're gonna need um, your FEIN number and your unemployment number. And if you don't know these, that's okay. Um, just contact your local Iowa Workforce office and we can, um, we can help you with that. Um, and then you're also gonna need your employer contact information. Um, so the registrations that steps that you're gonna to have to take is first you're gonna follow the registration steps that are online to create your account at iowaworks.gov. Um, then you're gonna create your job order. Um, once your registration is submitted, a representative from Iowa Works will call to verify your account. So we'll give you a call and ask you some questions about it. Um, we're gonna to check to make sure that job order is in there um, just to make sure it is legitimate posting. Um, once verified, the Iowa Works representative will enable your account and your posting um, for your postings and candidate searches. So that's going to be just your first step. So um, I'm going to share my screen now, and we are going to um, register. Um, since can you see my screen? Oh wait, thanks, Bonnie. <laughs> Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is um, register Adams, Adams, and IT law firm since it's almost Halloween. And um, so the first thing we're going to do is up here, you see the login information and right below that it says not registered yet. So this is actually a training site um, that I'm using today, um, but normally you'd see iowaworks.gov here at the top. Um, so we're just going to click on the not registered yet. And it's going to take Sometimes it's a little slow here when we're on Zoom. So just um, bear with me a little bit. Um, and you're gonna see a few options. Um, option one, already registered. Option two, try us. And option three is where we wanna be, create a user account. Um, and then you have individuals, employers and agents and providers. Um, today we're an employer and agent. Um, so that's where we want to click. And it's gonna take us to um, a place, this on our page, it's gonna have um, some information for you that you'll wanna read through and then you just need to agree to it. So we're just gonna click, I agree today. And then you gotta select your representative type and you're gonna select that you're a direct representative of your organization. So we'll go ahead and click that and click next. And you have the option of having recruiting or um, a WOTC service. And today we're just gonna do a recruiting registration and click continue. And um, this is where um, you need your first set of information. So you need your federal employee ID number, um, your FEIN, and you also need your unemployment account number. So I've just made up some um, numbers for my law firm here. And if you mistype, it'll, um, it'll tell you. So that's, um, if you mistype it, they don't match or if there's already another um, federal employee ID number that's the same in the system, it will also tell you that. Okay, so then we just click continue and it's gonna take us to the next page. And this is where we create our username. And um, our username is gonna be AAITT. And then we just create a password and the password does have to have um, a uppercase letter, lowercase letter, a number and a symbol. Um, so we're just gonna create one here. <coughs> and then we select the security question and oh there's a problem for the password um, either they don't match or i need to confirm my password so i um, had a little bit of troubles and apparently they are not the same so i'm going to start from scratch And then I'm going to select a security question. And um, so what is um, my pet's name? And um, of course, it's going to be my pet, right? 
And um, so, or wait a minute, it should be a thing, but I guess I'm past that already. So company name, so we're doing Adams, Adams, and it law firm. And you can see it shows my federal ID and my unemployment um, account number there. Um, and then um, I'm up here in Fort Dodge, so that's just my easy zip code to use. So I put that in there and then I'm gonna select, I'm gonna add in my address. And of course I live on Cemetery Lane here. And um, in Fort Dodge, and you can see it dropped all the Fort Dodge information that we're in Webster County and everything. Uh, then it asks for a mailing address and I can add in my mailing address if it's different. Um, today it's just the same. So I'm gonna click that it is and it's gonna drop all that information down for me. Um, and then I'm gonna put in my title and um, I'm an attorney. And my first name is, of course, Gomez. And my last name is Adams. Then I'm gonna add in my phone number. And my email address. And it does check these to make sure they're in the correct format. Um, so you wanna make sure that you do put them in correctly. And you have to put them in twice. And then um, it asks for you to please select a method in which you prefer to receive notifications. Um, today, I'm going to select that I want it to go internal message, um, just in case I accidentally pop one out there and that's a real email address. Um, but you can select that you want it to go to your email um, either way, and it's going to pull that over. And um, Jeff will show you how that filters into your actual account here um, when he starts talking to you. Then you're going to um, scroll down to your company information and you're going to put in your industrial, um, your industrial code. So you, you don't have to know this, you can search for it. So we're just gonna search attorney here. And um, we are Office of Lawyers. So we're gonna select that. And um, we have one to four employees, so put that in there. And, um, and then the type of employer, we're of course the private sector. Um, and um, not a federal contractor. And um, we have lots of stairs in our house, so we're not ADA compliant. And, um, and then I'm not gonna select that. I want it to go to the American Jobs Exchange and the Labor Exchange today, but definitely if you wanna search nationwide, that's a great option to select. It automatically sends that out there. Um, this is another place that I strongly suggest you fill out. This part's not required, um, but it's a great way to help entice applicants to your positions. Um, people like to know about the companies that they're applying to. So we're just going to put a little bit of something about our company. Um, so of course, a quote from Gomez himself. Um, so we have never won a case, but never lost a case either. That should be an exclamation mark, I think. Um, and then we wanna check whether we're a union shop, non-union, minority owner, veteran owner, um, woman owner, um, if the, any of those apply. Um, that just helps entice different types of um, employees when they look at your account. Um, you can select whether you're a second chance um, employer. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this. Um, sometimes this is a little bit scary, um, but by selecting that your second chance option, um, it's not telling the system that you're willing to, um, that you're going to take every single person um, that applies is all it's saying is if somebody does have a criminal background, um, you're going to take a look at that and decide whether it's somebody that you can use or not. Um, so it's, it's not saying you'll consider every offense. It's just saying that you'll consider somebody that has an offense. Um, so this just gets it out there to a few more people. Um, today we're going to click yes, because uh, I want you to see the next option. And it says, can we display that you are a second chance employer to job seekers? So this is just telling them that you're okay with that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and select, select yes today. Um, and then benefits offered. This is another place that I would suggest that you add some information into. 
Um, so you can um, select your benefits and it gives you a drop down. And um, of course, we got to have life insurance if we're going to be blowing up trains with, um, with Gomez, right? Um, so we got all of this information that we can add in here. Um, give them a company vehicle. Um, and then we just click save. And it's going to take us to the next section here. Okay, so then it gives us a notice of employers regarding the job bank dis non discrimination and hiring restrictions based on an employer's unemployment status. So I'm going to make sure you read through there and um, and um, then just click next. There's some links in there that if you don't understand something, you can look a little bit more detailed at it. It's running a little bit slow now. So apparently we have a little bit of a longer wait today. <laughs> oh, I just lost my connection. So I'm going to see if I can get back in there. And since I already put most of the information in, I should be able to log in. Um, my login. Well, of course, technology isn't always um, on my side, so <laughs> I'm kind of wondering if I've lost my connection again. So Jeff, we might need to just switch over to, to you since it doesn't seem to be happy right now on my end. I certainly can if you'd like to. <laughs> Not to say yeah. I'll be any better on this one. When I was practicing this a little earlier, I was, ha I was having the same issues. So hopefully it'll, work. it'll start working for you soon. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jeff Graney. I'm a career planner, business engagement specialist at the Des Moines, Iowa Works office. And I'm going to talk about the how to create a job order. And then once you get the job order created, how to search for job candidates and then what to do with those job candidates. And then we'll get back to Nancy uh, to see how you can finish up with the, uh, the um, creation of the account. So again, I'm gonna assume that the account had been created already. And let me go ahead and share my screen. So once you get the account created, and you log in, it'll look something like this. I'll have a banner and you can always just go ahead and click on post a job. But I do wanna point out that most of the everyday navigation of the website is gonna be here on the left. And there are multiple ways of doing some of the same things. Like in this case, for to create a job order, we can either go to manage jobs or down to recruitment services 
and manage jobs and so forth. So I'm going to start off with manage jobs. Now, when you start off, this part here is going to be blank. Um, I've already created a few job orders here uh, to serve as examples for later on. But when you get in here, it's going to be blank and you would simply go to add a new job order. And we'll see if I run into the same problem that Nancy was having. I wish we had some elevator music to play for everyone. And try to refresh. Okay. Okay. So after you click on add a new job order, it'll bring you to how do you want to create the job order? You will have, when you first do this, two options, manual entry basic job order or manual entry custom job order. These other two will appear um, once you have some job orders created. The difference between the two manuals is, is that um, for the manual custom, that one gives a lot more control over the questions that are asked and how you're going to create it. It, for example, will allow you to, to define what sort of skills you want to have part of your job. You can specify things like whether or not the person is going to have a drug test, what language you prefer them to, language skills you prefer them to have, um, and different ways of how to apply. For the purposes of time, and because honestly, for a lot of jobs, it's much easier. I'm going to do this. We're going to use this manual entry basic job order. Uh, it's much faster, and I'll show you how to uh, how you can tweak things a little bit later on. Then you want to go to the job title. So this is only well, just a title alone. It could be anything you want. Uh, concerning the audience here, I'm going to go with child care worker. Now, as you can see, there were different things that popped up. With these, now keep in mind or to note, if you click on any of these, what it does is that down below in the next section, it gives you some options, some suggested, suggested occupations. So child care director is gonna be, this should be a little different right here for occupation, but you can title it anything you want. So I'm just gonna go on with child care worker. And then select the occupation. So title and then occupation. This occupation is relative, is pretty important because this is going to pre-fill a lot of information later on in this job order creation. Jo uh, agency job ID, this is up to you. If you wanted to have different uh, nicknames or classifications for the job orders, this is where you put it. Job description. This can just be very simple or can be kind of complex, how, depending on your needs. Care for the little ones. One of the things we do not suggest is that, well, you don't need to go to too much detail on how to apply or hourly rate and so forth. You can if you want, but that kind of information is going to be later on. So as a, in general, on this part here for the job description, you want to keep it as, well, describing what the job responsibilities are going to be. Later on, uh, you have more fields you can fill in. Like every form that you've seen online, pay attention to the ones that have red asterisks or red stars like right here or near here. Uh, those are the things that have to be answered. Other things like minimum salary, for example, you don't have to show it. We suggest that you do, however, for at least salary because that catches the eyes of a lot of people. Let's just say minimum salary is gonna be $9. And we're gonna have it per hour. And of course you can adjust it to per month, per week, whatever the case would be. Pay comments, you get a lot of variation here. Hours per week, I was gonna say hours vary. 
just to show you what it looks like when you change a few of the variables. And the shift, you're going to be working in the daytime. Now, earlier, when I selected child care worker as the occupation, and I said that it was going to pre-fill in some of the form later on, this is what I referred to for the available skills. As you can see here, four skills fall under service and sales, and four skills fall under education and social services, and six under healthcare. We would suggest that you browse through these to be sure that they do apply for the job that, uh, for the position that you are um, hiring for. Because sometimes, especially let's take for example, example healthcare, patient care, um, you may not be needing to lift or transport ill or injured patients. You may or may not, um, but pay attention to be sure that something isn't included in here that you really don't want. That said, keep in mind that the more skills you put in here, the narrower of a job search you're going to be doing. So if you want to cast a wide net to for the general area to see who's out there and try to attract a, a larger number of candidates, put fewer skills here. If you want a very specific job, then go wild on the skills. Same thing for the minimum education required. Let's just say that you need an associate's degree. And like I said, I'm just filling in the things that are required. Uh, on your own, when you do create the job order, you can read through these and a lot of them make sense. Um, does this job require a license certification? If you click yes, that they do require a certification, you'll have to type in what license certification it is. The name of my company, by the way, is Acme. So Acme child certificate is accessible by transportation I should say no don't require any sort of license when you're creating the job order at the very end it's going to ask you this uh, capta thing to be sure that you're not a bot the main thing i want to point out on this one is that it is case sensitive and everyone i've come across they're all capitals anyhow so be sure your caps is on when you do it and hit create a job. Now, some of this following part, uh, we missed out a little bit and Nancy will cover when we get back to it, but you can adjust things a little bit later on. Uh, for example, if your company has multiple locations, uh, you might want to, this be your opportunity to be sure that it's set to the correct location. You may not be hiring the same position for every location. Um, but this part is where you can go through and you can edit things. Because basically, I'll show you down at the very bottom, there's no post job because the job is created. So to summarize that part, when you start a job order, go to manual basic and answer a few of the questions, fill in the right information, and that's the job order, the basic part of the job order. Some of the things we really suggest that you go through to be careful of would be, for example, the job application methods accepted. We do suggest that you change this if you go through the job order creation that I uh, suggested. If you go through the longer method, then you would be asked this question. But by default, if you go with the quick method of creating a job order, it's going to have you have the customers have the the job seekers provide a resume through Iowa works in order to apply and honestly that may not be what you're going for so I want to show you the options here you might prefer them to contact you by email or by mail or in person or you can put in the company's website here if you want them to apply online but again, we do suggest that you change this before you completely finish things and exit out of this part of the screen. Yes, yeah, so I'm waiting for this to end. I'll just go ahead and back. Seems like we're running into the same, same problems. Uh, same thing when it comes to, you can also add in uh, application questions at the beginning, kind of a pre-screen thing. Um, the application notification. This is something else that we would suggest that you change because by default, whenever somebody applies for the position, 
you are going to get notification through the message center that is part of the Iowa Works website. And that would mean that you would have to log in every time to see if somebody applied or to see if they have any questions. So to avoid that and to have it more direct, I mean, you can keep that, but to have it more direct, more time efficient for you, uh, we would just suggest that you also change the edit application notification method to include, in addition to the message, messenger senator with Iowa Works, have it include your email address or your telephone number. And it's holding up on me too. So that said, that is the creating the job order. Now, now that you have your job order created, I'm going to, there are a couple of things you can do with this, but um, I'm going to get back to the job, return to job orders so you can see what it looks like to actually search for job candidates. So I created this one right here, this child care worker. In the past, I had created child care, activities coordinator, child care provider. With the one we just created, I do want to point out that the first thing you, well, we got the categories here, job order status, online status, when it's created, and when it's, when, act, when it's inactive. By default, the job orders that you create are going to be inactive after a month. This is adjustable. By editing, you can go in and change that part, um, or after it's, after it's inactive, you can reactivate it. And you can see here online status, if it's past November 19th, it would go to offline. I do want to point out this veteran hold. What this means is that after you create a job order for the first 24, well, at least 24 hours, it is viewable only to job seekers who are veterans. I say at least 24 hours because we created this job order today in the middle of the day on Tuesday. So for the rest of the, of the day today and all day Wednesday, it's only going to be veteran or it's going to be viewable by veterans. This will first be viewable by the general public on Thursday. Now with the job order created, the next thing part I'm gonna show you is how to search for candidates. I'm gonna show you the, the easiest way to start off with, which is search by job cr criteria. This is it. Click on that and it works. It Iowa works. Now, these search results, these are based on the criteria that were inputted at the beginning of the job order creation or as part of the company creation. So one of the parts uh, that Nancy will get to was location, where the company is based out of. The company that I created, Acme Child Care, I had them based out of Hamilton County. So all of these here are job seekers who say they are looking for work in Hamilton County. That said, with this very first one that you can see here, as you know, Cedar Rapids is not in Hamilton County. So the reason why Wedge and Tilly's appears on this, on this list as a possibility is because Wedge said that he is looking for work in Hamilton County. This can be either intentional or it could be a mistake and oversight by the job seeker when they're creating, the, creating their own account. So please be very mindful of when you see, when you get a list, when you do the search, pay attention to where they're at. Don't necessarily discount them if they're far away, like in Cedar Rapids, but keep in mind that it might be a mistake. Another thing is, as you can see here, the, the resume title, Battle Station Demolition. The resume title isn't necessarily important for your purposes. This is how the job seeker, what they, what they titled their resume. So as you can see here, well, demolition or battle station demolition, uh, Bugs Bunny created one called Carrot Resume. This typically comes up when the job seeker is looking for multiple professions. And it's very likely that, let's say, someone who's interested in child care might also be looking for something in adult care. Um, so they might have two different resumes to highlight their experiences with different, with different uh, backgrounds. Or, like in the case of Maury Smith, they might just name it 
their name. So don't necessarily pay attention to it, but it could be revealing, like in the case of Regentiles, what type of work they're looking for. Um, other thing, other information you'll see is whether or not the resume is active, their desired salary, and so forth. Now, this quick search that I did, let me go back and show you what I did. So after the job order is created, search by job criteria. Remember that I did a very basic, very quick um, job search. I, ca I cast that wide net by not having very many skills uh, selected. So that's why I get get job candidates that, as Wedge would show, may not be interested in childcare. Um, to narrow it a little bit further, let me go back, you can do a pre-fill advanced resume search. Resume search. What this does is that it brings up the advanced search option, which as the name advanced implies is more complicated. With it, you can change the search area, you can change what you're looking for, like the keywords and so forth. I'm just gonna leave, I'm not gonna change anything. You can feel free to do it, um, to play around with it when you get a job order created. I'm gonna show you how it's going to vary with what we're looking for. As soon as it proceeds. And if it doesn't, because technology is our not helping us too much today. I'm just gonna hit stop. So we're not spending too much time on that. Well, since that's taken a little bit, a little while, I'm gonna go back to the basic search to show you what you can do with the job candidates once you find them. Well, with this list, Hamilton County. Well, hey, I know Jewel is there and Bugs Bunny uh, has an associate's degree, looking for any sort of, hey, things match. So if you want to, find out more about them, you can view their resume. And assuming this, part's work, this part works too. And we're not having a whole lot of luck today. You can view the resume that they created. Now, keep in mind that a lot of people on Iowa Works, um, they, well, people on Iowa Works, they have the opportunity to upload the resume that they created. So the resume can be very pretty and very professional looking, or they can use the uh, the resume creator that is part of this, of this website. In Bugs Bunny's case here, we can tell that because, well, it looks very basic that he used the resume creator as part of it. But as you can tell from the objective, that he wants to care for the little bunny rabbits and tiny primates. He likely is a good, good job candidate that we want to contact. So once you do the job, create the job order, do the job search, see someone you like, you can just contact them by the phone number or email address they have at the top. You could uh, email, you can, you can also email their resume to other people in your organization. But the main point here is to contact them either directly through by the information presented on their resume or through the Iowa Works system. Also, you can save, very important, I didn't wanna point out, is that you can save the resume search criteria. So this was a very general criteria, but, I'm going to show you here. Or it's not working at all. Let me refresh. There we go. Nope. I don't want to change. Sorry. It went too quickly. I want to save search. I apologize. Save search. This is a very important step once you set up the job order because it's going to set up what we call the virtual recruiter. What this means is that, let's just call it a child care search. I can set this so that every day, week, or month, 
the system will automatically do a search for either new registrants who say they're looking for jobs in Hamilton County or whatever area you put it as, um, or people who modify their, their resume and that it can email you every week or month when someone new pops up. It'll save you a lot of time this way. And you can select who it's going to notify if you have multiple users on your account. And save. So those are some of the main things I wanted to show you when it comes to the job search just to, and job creation. Uh, to summarize, so basic job order creation, doing the manual basic, but changing a few things like the, um, the notification method and how to apply method. Play around with the job search candidates, uh, with the search results to get the most number of candidates that you're looking for. Pay attention to the resume name uh, and also to their location. And also be sure that you save your search because that will save you a lot of time later on. Uh, with that said, I'm gonna turn it back over to Nancy. Um, or Nancy, you there? I'm here. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm still having a little bit of problems with my tunnel. Um, so I am actually, I was able to get into an account that I had previously created. Um, so I'm gonna show that for you guys and um, just show you how to put the, um, put other locations in. Um, so just a second while I get back out there. Okay, so um, as you can see here, I um, have opened up my um, House at Pooh Corner um, employer account. And normally when the first time you get all the way in, it's going to have um, some additional steps that you can do right there um, in the middle where um, this analyze the labor market information is. Um, but since I've already been into this account, because um, this is my practice one, um, it's already gotten, I've already gotten past that piece. Uh, but in Iowa Works, there's multiple ways to do just about everything. Um, so I'm gonna show you um, the alternative way to do that. Um, so you have, over on the right-hand side, you have all of your information about where you can go. Um, but then it says, welcome to my employer workspace, AMIL, and it has a view your profile and contact information. So we're just gonna click on that. It's gonna take us out um, to the information that I put in in registration. So you can see, um, this is the house on Pooh Corner. Um, and um, that it's um, the director, A. Milne, um, and we've got all this information that we had already put in. Um, then we're gonna take a look at locations. Um, so you can see I've already put some locations in here. Um, and this is the best place to put um, contacts and locations if you're putting in two at the same time, um, because you can, at the bottom, it gives you the option to add location and contact. Um, so you can see I have house at Pooh Corner. I also have the 100 Acre Woods um, where um, Christopher Robin and Tigger Bounce are both, um, both able to post jobs for. Um, and then we have the Honey Pot um, where um, instead of Christopher Robin, we have um, Winnie the Pooh that's um, directing that location. Um, so we're just gonna add another location and um, because I'm running out of um, Winnie the Pooh ideas, we're gonna go back to my um, Adams at Adams um, in it law firm and see if we can put one in. So I just clicked on the add location and contact and hopefully this doesn't kick me out. <laughs> and I think it might just. And Nancy, what was working for me when I was doing it uh, was re refreshing the page and then trying again. Oh, there we go. So um, we have the contact information. So um, my other location for that um, location is going to be um, it's going to be the Adams um, Buzzard Farm. So we just or whoops, I'm putting that in the first name, so that doesn't help. Um, so it's Fester Adams location. So we put that in there and then he is a partner and we give him a phone number and we give him his email address. Okay. 
And then we're going to give the location name. So this is going to be the, um, the Adams um, Buzzard Farm and that a zip code and then give it its address. It's of course at Buzzard Avenue and um, I gotta give it a phone number as well because um, that might be separate from um, Fester's phone number. And you can, if it has a separate company address, you can give that, you wanna put in your um, NIAX number. And it just drops it right in there again. We can add our address in there. And then we're gonna add in um, what kind of location designee um, this is. Um, so we're gonna say other, cause I'm not really sure what their buzzard farm does. Um, and then click next. And then we decide what kind of contact designation that Fester is. And of course he's in a partner. So we're gonna select that, click next. Um, and this is kind of, the next part's gonna be kind of the important part um, because most of the time when you add in a contact, um, you're going to be you're going to want them to be able to post their own jobs, and um, so this is where you can give them the ability to sign in. So you just click in, um, give this contact the ability to sign in, and then you can create their username and their password. And um, and then you can um, select security code for them. And I usually would just put in something um, for default for them to get in and tell them to change that as soon as they um, as soon as they do get in. Um, so thing, of course, is his pet and um, preferred method of um, I'm going to use internal mes message for this as well. And then we just click next. And I'm not sure if, um, Jeff, did you show them where the internal messages go? I was trying to get back in, so I wasn't listening to everything uh, you said. <laughs> no, I did not. Sorry for okay. that part. So I will, I will show you guys where that's at um, in case you accidentally get something coming through as internal messages. And see if we can get back to it. Okay, so the user privileges. Um, since he's a partner, I'm going to give him access to everything, but you can click or uncheck anything you want. Let me just click save. And so now you can see we've got Fester Adams and the house at Pooh Corner with his Adams Buzzard Farm um, listed here. So you're able, that will show up when you're posting jobs and you'll be able to, um, to select that as well. Um, so now we're going to show you... Um, where to, so we'll just go back to our home. So up here you have your way to get, just get back to the main page that you started at. So we're just gonna click home and it's gonna take us back to the sign in screen. And um, so if you ever accidentally leave it on internal messages, um, I, you know, if you're not getting notices that people are applying to your jobs, I would definitely go in and check to see if. Um, it's showing that you have messages in your, so you can see there's two unread messages in here. So if we're just gonna click on that, we might be able to see what they are. And I might've clicked it too many times. Um, so you can see we had some, um, so we had profile updates. So you can see that um, it's notifying us that we, um, that we changed some things in there. So that's where those kind of notifications are going to go. Um, also, anytime um, somebody applies to your job, it's not only going to, if you select that, it's going to come via email. It's not only going to come via email, it'll also drop something in there for you so you know. Um, and that's, um, oh, I guess the other thing I wanted to make sure I notified you guys of is how to do account resets. Um, so if you forget your password, you're not just stuck out. Um, there is a... Um, I'm going to sign out so you can see this. Um, but right up at the top under username and password, there's a forgot username and password. And then you've got options to forgot user or forgot password, forgot username, and forgot username and password. Um, 
And so you can retrieve through that. If you don't know all the information, you're still not completely stuck because it will give you the option to email your local iWorks office. And then one of the representatives will give you a call or send you an email back. Um, they might ask for some additional information just to verify that it's you and then, um, and then help assist you with getting back into that account. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Vani um, so she can um, finish this out. Thank you, Nancy. Yes. Yep. So um, I know that there was a few people that joined after uh, the presentation began, but don't remember, um, don't worry um, that the information that, to th that was provided today will is being recorded. So you won't miss out. Also, um, I know a lot of the information we provided may be a little bit overwhelming, especially during the lunch hour, but know that this it is recorded and you can always go back to revisit this information. Um, now, if you happen to have any problems as you are uh, navigating through the Iowa Work system, remember that you can always gain assistance with customized recruitment plans and technical assistance uh, with your local workforce office. And I want to show you from our from the same site um, that Nancy and Jeff went to, which is iowaworks.org, there is a banner at the top. It says, connect, contact us. If you click on that, you will see that every Iowa work office is located that, there. So you should find your local works, Iowa works office somewhere among that list. Feel free to contact any business services rep representative or ser services or career planner. They would be more than happy to assist you uh, with your recruitment needs. So as um, with that being said, we would like to thank each and every employer that has joined us today for the work that you do in your communities is essential. So it is because of your passion and your commitment to your communities that allows the Iowa Works Office to be your champions of service. And I wanna thank you. I will now turn it over to Danielle. Thank you so much, Bonnie. And I wanna say thank you to Iowa Works for this wonderful presentation today. You guys are truly a wonderful partner. And thank you everyone for jumping on today. I know this was a lot of information, but I am so glad we were able to share it with you. I'm just gonna share, you, share with you guys one other page. So this is a new recruitment retention page that Iowa CCRNR has, and you will be able to find Iowa Works contact information on here as well and you will be able to see the video that was posted today. Um, if you do not follow us on social media, I encourage you to do that through these little tabs right here. You'll be able to see this video on YouTube as well. The last thing that I wanna say is we'll be sharing a survey at the end of today's call to get your feedback and questions. And then we'll also be sharing questions that were not answered that Iowa Works is gonna answer after the call. So like I said, thank you everyone for joining us today and I hope this was helpful. Yesterday was National Hiring Day, so please get on and make your free Iowa Works account to utilize their services. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>